the mainstream can't necessarily be trusted. That's why I think it's important that independent film festivals such as ours exist. So I'm the coordinator of Scottish Queer International Film Festival, or SQUIF. So I had done a little bit of filmmaking. I worked as a film programmer for a year or so, and I actually went down to London, and I went to the London LGBT Film Festival there, and I had an amazing time, and I was reflecting on the fact that there wasn't anything similar in Scotland. So when I came back up, I contacted a group of people I knew, people who were already involved in queer arts and queer film, and we got together and started planning putting on a film festival. It's a festival for representing LGBTQ plus identities, for catering to LGBTQ plus audiences and showing a wide range of diverse and inclusive uh, films and other media. LGBT and queer people are represented in mainstream cinema, but it can tend to be that the representation is not very good. So we know, for example, that recently there's been a lot of controversy over transgender characters being played by cisgender actors. There's a lot of queer films that I've found really inspiring. I really, uh, really like the films of Pedro Almodovar, who's a Spanish director who's had kind of relative success kind of pushing into the mainstream with films that are pretty queer, like big colourful melodramas that he makes. And then, for example, is a filmmaker called Cheryl Dunye, who's a black lesbian filmmaker working in the US. She made a very groundbreaking film called The Watermelon Woman in the 1990s, which I believe was the first feature film to be directed by a black lesbian woman in the US. So yeah, those are a few examples, but I do, I have to admit, I do also like a lot of the more mainstream stuff. I'm a big sci-fi fan. And well, I love the Wachowskis, who are obviously queer filmmakers as well, because they're uh, two transgender women. I mean, this is a really, really interesting example, actually. It's obviously when they made the Matrix, people knew them as, as two men and until they announced that they uh, were transitioning and that they are women. So it kind of makes you look back on their earlier films, I think, such as The Matrix and think, well, what are there any queer elements here? I think, I mean, for example, just in The Matrix, there's, there's a really, uh, there's a strong female character, obviously. But, but I suppose just the story about The Matrix, so it's about how reality is, is not what we think it is. And that actually, if you make the decision, to, is it the red pill or the blue pill? I don't know. If you make that decision, then you, you get a whole other perspective on what reality actually means and I think that that can be quite similar to being LGBT or to being queer because once you start thinking about it you become aware of the ways in which our society um, kind of tries to dictate to people what their sexual identity should be and what their gender identity should be so there's kind of a it's, the matrix can be seen as an analogy for, for queerness. <laughs> 